mics are hot. All right, well, if those mics are hot, nigga. Mike's are hot. You know what time it is, my nigga. You know what time it is. Woo! Yeah, baby. Listen, stay the fuck away from people that piss you off. If they motherfucking piss you off, stay the fuck away from around. If you know you just can't tolerate these motherfuckers because they gonna piss you off, do yourself the biggest favor. And stay the fuck away from around them. I don't give a goddamn if it's at work, if it's at school, if it's at home, if you know, <laughs> if you already motherfucking know it. Man, these motherfuckers gonna piss me off, man. If you see the motherfucker coming, pew, go the other motherfucking way. Because your motherfucking happiness and your peace of mind is too motherfucking important to you to let a motherfucker piss you off. Mental health. And I'm gonna say it one more time. Say it. Stay away. For motherfuckers that piss you off. Fire in the hole! Matter of fact, stay the fuck away from me! How about that? Yeah! Welcome back, Firing Squad! We in this bitch! It's your motherfucking captain, Jimmy Moore. I'm here with just 10-star General G Money, his motherfucking self. And, oh, man, we got a lot to talk about. And it's all about protecting our energy. Baby Yoda vibes still popping. Oh, man. West Side Comedy Club, why'd you do this? Why? Lori, the manager. Why? You bum bitch. I want to know where crisis when I'm in the crisis and why I lean on other devices. I'm sick of living wicked one day, next minute I'm righteous. Just tell me what the meaning of life is. You made me with a purpose. Why work? Can I just do that? How I take a step forward just to take two back? What's the lesson? I'm trying to learn, but I'm sick of guessing. If I'm human, why you asking for perfection? You said before the world you chose me. I don't feel so lucky. I if I'm so wonderfully made, why I feel so ugly? Mm. How it sense so wicked when it feels so lovely? Guess my question is, do you still love me? How you see us in this chaos and got the power to change it and won't? I would do it if I could, but I can't because I don't. Then he told me, keep faith. The answer is hope. Keep walking. I'm enhancing your growth. You so close to begin to know. You heard, niggas? I got to know. I know you want to know. So when I look like holding back, when I look like keeping this information in, shout out to Eyes Low the motherfucking Dawn, man, with that intro. What up, Firing Squad? We here, man. Another motherfucking week. Another motherfucking episode. Another moment of my truth. With yours truly, the 10 star general himself, y'all. Give it up for G Money. What up, G Money? Nothing much, man. What's been going on? What's been going on in your world besides falling in love (laughs) again? I started that new job at. Yeah, uh, falling in love again. Don't you try to talk over. (laughs) Falling in love again. But you're making sure that the falling in love again. Podcast is still popping, falling in love, <laughs> fucking. So I really can't hate my falling in love again. My little G money, he's popping up. <laughs> yeah, nigga uh-huh. just came up with a song with you and your love, but you still yet being productive when it comes to firing a hole and keeping the shit. Happen? What I would have done, man. Don't don't wear yourself out on the on the improvised songs. We still don't have a G Money talk one, yet, so you still got it. You gotta go with that. Cam, uh, our our guy Cam on the Patreon the other day said that uh, I think none of us are making a song because we just want to hear Jimmy's every week. <laughs> I bet you that we fucking dying. Shout <laughs> out to Cam. Funny. 
I got I gotta start reading that shit a little bit. Oh, oh dude. Oh my god. Yo, um, shout out to Josh once again for our, our awesome motherfucking on air fucking uh, fucking sign slash. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Yeah, this feels, like, to just call it a sign doesn't feel right. No, it's so much no, more than that. It really yeah, is. it really is, man. <laughs> uh, I just, but um, we uh, if we're gonna do shout out so early. We gotta stop the press. We got any birthday sound effects and shit like that, <laughs> man? Because we gotta. We don't normally shout out birthdays on this show. We don't. But this is a big birthday that we shouting out, man. You know what I mean? He's uh, an elite um, camaraderie. Um, all right, that fuck that word. Uh, he's <laughs> he's an elite uh, Spartan general, mm-hmm. uh, captain, um, uh, special agent, um, James Bond, um, uh, a Maximus, <laughs> um, a Leonidas. Uh, uh, Liam, whatever the guy from Taken, uh, he's that <laughs> guy. Um, he, 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 he's a, he, Ragnar, he's a Ragnar, you know what I mean? Um, and not just like a day one, but like before there was a day one, the sec, you know, once, when we linked up, he was right behind us with the whole like, all the marketing we did leading up to the episode, like that Halloween like theme we did, he was right behind that and like Well was from the beginning we clicked. That is a motherfucking fact, man, and it's no other than motherfucking our illustrator. A lot of you guys see like our holiday signs, our all of our artwork and stuff like that. All the little cool shit that you used to see early on with fire in a hole. And that you still be seeing, what um, like you know, holiday stuff. Um, our guy Jonas, man. Um, yeah, that baby Yoda picture you saw that was fucking with, with my co-host Kev- <laughs> Kevin Brennan. With my co-host, with the baby. There's one also. There's one, that's a different person made that, but that's yeah, that that person that Kevin made Brennan that, it. but it, it originated from Jonas Baby Yoda vibes yes. joint, you know. We are humbled. We are thankful. We are extremely honored to have you on our team, for you to have believed in us when we were just a speck, a mere uh, a thought over, you know, motherfuckers was just not really jacking us. But you saw it, man, and you was fucking with us, homie. So with that being said, man, I just want to say... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Everybody come on now. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. All right. <laughs> I know the white people are like, what version is that? <laughs> That's the Stevie Wonder um, <laughs> on steroids version that would be considered mine. Okay, <laughs> I know you guys are used to the forever version of happy birthday. You know, ha- happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Then they start getting nosy. How old are you now? 
How old are you now? How old are you now? How old are you now? Then they start getting personable. Did you stick your dick in? Dick. <laughs> <laughs> the, the happy birthday song, the original version, you can, that can go on forever. You can just put a million different situations inside that happy birthday, man. I'm dead serious. All right, man. <laughs> I'm ready to get to this motherfucking show. It's been a hell of a fucking eventful fucking week. A hell of a fucking week. And when I tell y'all I try to keep it positive and keep it going with these baby Yoda vibes, it's not easy. It's not easy. But I have to do this so we can really just kind of zoom back in and refocus our energy on how the show started. Because I want to double back back and double down on this so shout out to everybody jonas we love you over here but we got to start this show on on we got it we got to refocus the show real quick that that birthday shit i was like this nigga nigga crazy i'm talking about this nigga this nigga me okay like i I, why is he this nigga crazy when it's you you, nigga fuck out of here all right yo I need you to play this from the beginning again because I really want people to understand how simple it can be to protect your motherfucking zen. Press play. That piss you off. If they motherfucking piss you off, listen, stay the fuck away from people that piss you off. If they motherfucking piss you off, Stay the fuck away from around. If you know you just can't tolerate these motherfuckers because they going to piss you off, do yourself the biggest favor and stay the fuck away stop. from around. Stop. Stop. Give a Let me just say this, right? Let's stop right there. If you know you're heading into that hostile environment, You got to kind of take the blame off of other people and kind of put the shit on yourself because now you know this is bullshit that you're you're, you're in the midst of. Like, stay away from people that make you upset. Like, the bitch that always talking about y'all going to fucking all that wild shit and always acting like y'all going to fuck, but this bitch never give you no pussy, but you always buying her shit, buying this bitch socks, ants, all kind of wild shit. I don't even know why I said ants, but I'm just like, yo, you know, this bitch had you copping all kind of shit, and and, and she acting like she don't fuck, and you get all upset because you done spent half your check, and you didn't even put no money aside for your rent that's due in a couple of weeks. The fuck out of here, man. The fuck out of here. Stop putting yourself in these dangerous situations. Stop putting yourself in situations with bum-ass niggas, ladies. You know this nigga a motherfucking bum. You know this nigga ain't shit. But you still set yourself up for motherfucking high hopes just to motherfucking do what? Get upset. Protect your motherfucking energy. Stop thinking every nigga got a big dick. Go ahead, press play. And stay the fuck away from Ronald. I don't give a goddamn if it's at work, if it's at school, if it's at home, if you know <laughs> if you already motherfucking know it, man, these motherfuckers gonna piss me off, man. If you see the motherfucker coming, pew, go the other motherfucking way. Because your motherfucking <laughs> happiness and your peace of mind is too motherfucking important to you to let a motherfucker piss you off. And I'm gonna say it one more time. Stay away from motherfuckers that piss you off. Whew. Hey. When 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 he say that shit, that shit echoed in eternity within when I heard that shit. Let me tell y'all about my first incident that took place this motherfucker in past Wednesday 
at at a at a, at a dope ass comedy spot. Um, my nigga Rashi used to do, and then my homie Damon Rosier. Both of the brothers um moved on to paradise. They're resting in peace. Okay, um, but had this um this comic chick I'm um, hosting. All right, um, I'm watching her fuel up on liquor all fucking night. I'm watching her, you know, um, just be a stage hard for attention. Like, my thing is this. When comics, you're a host, you don't need to do a lot of time in between the comics. Matter of fact, if the comic that gets off stage was already a success with the audience, you don't need to do nothing but bring the next act on. Just a quick check in with the crowd. How you guys feeling? You guys feeling good? How is how was he? Y'all loved him? Well, if y'all loved him, y'all gonna love the next guy coming to the stage. Please start clapping your hands. No, this bitch ain't got none of that coof, none of that. And she just up there piggybacking off of the shit that niggas is up there talking about. Nothing original, nothing creative. So she wasn't just the only part of the problem. Uh, once your headliner is in the building, your objective is to get your headliner on stage. Don't hold the show up. So I know a lot of you guys are like, where, where is this at? This is not at a comedy club. This is on the outskirts in the nigger room, okay? Now, when I say the outskirts, like, think of um, Gladiator. When, when when Maximus was gladiator in and in, in the outskirts of Rome where where he's like, I do not entertain. I do not entertain. Is this not why you are here? That you know, those those kind of arenas, well that's the kind of shit man, this shit is. So it's not a structured, but there should be etiquette. That sets the structure. Well, this bitch is the worst. Okay? Uh, I'm watching her do all this shit. And then I'm watching another thing has got to come to a halt. Now, I don't give a fuck what your race is. I don't give a fuck what your financial um, um, status is. I don't give a fuck what your sexual preferences. I don't give a fuck what your religion beliefs are. I judge you off of how you interact with me. Everyone gets a basic state of love and trust. A basic state of love and trust. Pearl Jam. Um, it's a song. State of love and trust by Pearl Jam. It's on uh, on this um, this movie soundtrack called Singles. Oh, my God, that song fucking kicks ass. But nevertheless, this shit has gone too far with the LGBTQ community. I've watched them bully every fucking act that came up there, doc. Every act that came up there with their loud and obnoxiousness and... If anybody said anything to them, they were ready, ready to inconvenience the night. So I watch every comment that went on stage have to bow down to these motherfuckers just because they wanted peace so they can do their set. Now, I'm a nigga that believes... If we're coming to uh, 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 an establishment where people are patronizing for a service, we're all fucking grown-ups here, and we know what time it is. I'm not going to say all of the comics were good, but that's the magic of the craft. Sculpting it, finding its perfection. This bum bitches... When I get on stage, I I I I, oh, I I I make them give a round of applause for all the acts that came on, and you know I I, I you know soften them up just to take them all the way left. Um, I I just want to give a shout out to all the bitches that's out here sucking dick on the first night. You guys are the real heroes. Um, 
the place starts laughing. The lesbian bitch goes, oh, my God, that's so rude. Why would you say that? And I'm like, what, what, what's rude? What's rude? The fact that a nigga wants his dick sucked? <laughs> that's rude? Because niggas want their bitch mouth to wrap around the girth and the veins of his shaft? That's rude? Nah, bitch. You rude. You rude. Judging me off of my natural behavior desires and acknowledgments. Huh? I'm the bad guy, though. Listen, man. What we're not going to do is this. And this is a hundred. All that trying to bully a nigga shit with this policy that's been implicated into our society where we got to act like this shit is normal and because we speak out against it, we're abnormal. You know what I'm saying, G Money? Nah, I hear you. you and, and I'm just like, yo, 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 homie, I'm not copping now. Not on the stage, not in my life. Wrong is wrong, right is right. You niggas could walk around acting comfortably confused all the fuck you want. Now we can get this shit right and really respect one another on some real positive shit. Or nigga, we could call an ace and ace. An abomination is an abomination, B. Period. And not a city, a city girl, period, nigga. Regular period. So when this bitch got a hold of me talking some real shit, she want to get extra loud. And what was crazy was, um, fucking, it wasn't that, it, it was her, when she asked me this question, I mean, would you want your daughter out here sucking dick? I mean, what would you do if that's your daughter? Would you want your daughter out here sucking dick? If I had a daughter, I guess the objective would be to be grooming her for Earth. To be a part of the activities that take place on Earth. And yes, <laughs> yes, if I had a daughter, chances are my daughter's going to be out here sucking a dick or two. Unless she just thotty out. Unless she chooses to thotty the fuck out and just choose to have her throat tattooed by niggas' dicks. Throughout her region. But who am I to stop the flow of nature? See, that's the problem, bitch. I should have said this on stage. See, that's the problem, bitch. Your daddy wasn't home to groom you for the world. Because if your daddy was home to groom you for the world, you wouldn't be out here eating pussy. And don't talk that I was born gay shit. No, bitch, you got kids. Yeah, you, you, she, this bitch like, I got kids. That was offensive. Well, bitch, you ain't gay. You're confused. You out here trying to see what it is, nigga. Don't no nigga get no fucking idea thinking that he can switch teams. Hey, I could take a dick in the butt. Oh, I could suck a dick. And then, nah, I'm not with that. And then go back to motherfucking fucking bitches and shit like that. Yeah, I was just trying some dicks out. Get the fuck out of here with your tank way of thinking. You want to think like tank? Nigga, get in the tank. With a bunch of niggas. And oil yourselves down. Fuck out of here. So after I bombed on the bitch, 
I got the host walking right in front of the fucking stage talking to the bitch, and I'm telling the host, yo, move. Don't give her no attention. The more attention you give her, the more you're feeding her. G-Money, this bitch go wave me off, and this bitch going to start talking to the bitch like I'm not the headliner, like I'm not funnier than you, like you bugging, bitch. So in the midst of all that, I said, listen, man, hold on. <laughs> Y'all got me fucked up. Y'all think I come in, I don't even do these rooms no more, nigga. I do it out of love. The, the promoter called me. He's like, yo, bro, I've been trying to get your, your number for two years. All these comics acting like they don't got my number. Two years. He's asking mad comics. So you have Jimmy. You bitch ass niggas in the comedy community. I'm telling you, I'm going to do an episode on just talking about all the bitch ass, un, unfamous, unfunny niggas out here. I'm going to do an episode on y'all niggas. Just because I don't talk about you bitch ass niggas on fucking Facebook no more don't mean that you niggas ain't on my fucking mind and I don't see the whole shit that you niggas is doing. You niggas can't ice me. I'm a hustler, nigga. And I'm a handsome, funny, smart hustler, nigga. The fuck out of here, dog. You niggas can't. That niggas can keep trying all you want. So, when the bitch thought that she was going to disrespect me as her host and, and keep feeding these hoes, G-Money, I walked the fuck off stage. I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm out. Good night. And put that microphone down, nigga, and left. And then started driving away and realized, wait a moment. I'm going back to get my money. No, I didn't do a show, but I came out here. I want my money. And I went back there, and I'm so glad I went back there because the, the owner and the fucking promoter, my nigga Fly Tie, off the rip, the first thing they did was apologize to me. The first thing they did was apologize to me because they knew that shit was wrong. And they saw that the people was out. They, they was there to see me. That was a magical moment, but those, those, those insecure bitches... Fuck that wave up. That shit was super nasty, homie. Super fucking nasty. But none, nonetheless, I came back, got my money, and I left. And I told them I'm going to come back. I'm going to do y'all a guest spot. But it's got to be whenever this motherfucking host ain't working. I mean, did I do anything wrong in the, in the midst of that, G-Money? Nah. Like, you see what I be dealing with when I go to those rooms, though. Yeah, and like especially to like it's one thing when you get passive aggressiveness off stage, but for you to like be on stage and them talking as she's supposed to be a comic too, talking to another comic, you know, like that's just like. But she wasn't even talking to another comic. She was talking to an audience member, the gay bitch that was oh, being loud no, yeah, yeah. and out of control. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right in front of the stage, this nigga G Money over here nodding off, yo. <laughs> this nigga trying to keep up with the conversation. <laughs> I know y'all niggas like, what the fuck is G-Money talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all normally don't hear me refer to him a lot, <laughs> but I'm watching him nod off and shit. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's why I keep calling. <laughs> I'm doing it on purpose to be an asshole. <laughs> 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 oh my god, no people That is not the fucking show coming on That's just a motherfucking ambulance from Passing by practicing <laughs> Fuck Anyway I, But, yo homie This is why you gotta start being around a little bit more You gotta be a little bit more present and shit like that See what the fuck's been going on with mm -hmm. me You know, you're my road manager, nigga the Fuck you out here doing I know what you're doing Falling in love again. <laughs> Falling in love again. But you know what? You're shorty a little cutie, man. Y'all make a little cute little couple. You think it's perfect for you. Ah! 
Ah, that nigga is so cute. That nigga should be going to fairs around the country. <laughs> yeah, with haystacks and shit like that. Throwing like fucking darts at balloons and winning and big teddy bears. Y'all got that, y'all got that kind of cuteness going on. <laughs> Yeah, nigga, I would sponsor y'all to go to fairs. Not, 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 not no fucking major sick flags and nothing like. <laughs> no, it's all fairs, uh, nigga. County, state yeah. fairs. Yeah, no, I got you. Yeah, yes. So. Yes. yes, yes, nigga, yes. Well, you know. <laughs> Whenever you motherfuckers get that song ready, y'all have a motherfucking song. But until then, y'all niggas know what it is. And with no further ado, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Money talk G Money Talk G Money Talk Alright nigga yeah, that's that was, new Yeah That's some <laughs> nigga another <laughs> motherfucking diamond hit That shit just went platinum bro That shit just went platinum bro Him and L L L L L L L what's 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 my Spanish uh, El, El, El Don, well, El, El Salvador? Salvador El Doso. El Salvador El Doso. <laughs> How many of these niggas, that's all they do is hits. Hola, Shina. Hola, Shina. Panteno. I don't even know, nigga, but that Panteno. <laughs> that shit is fire, nigga. Sonny Dina. It sounds very Spanish. It's I very know, Spanish. Sounding. My nigga. <laughs> Yo, what's up with this G Money talk, though, bro? Yeah, we here. Another week, it. another motherfucking <laughs> G Money talk. Another motherfucking hit intro song for the G Money talk. But Key Bingus did say he hit me in the DM. Okay. You know, you know, I don't really fuck with look through my DM and shit like that. But I be in there sometimes, man. And um Key Bangers like, yo, he gonna holler. He gonna get at us. He keep asking when we go come out to Cali, but I ain't got no affirmative date, so I can't really say nothing. I don't wanna freestyle, just say something to the nigga. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, but yeah, man. Gooch the Great had surgery. Yeah, oh, okay. this nigga had two hernias in his body. That nigga, if he didn't go to the hospital, he was just feeling fucked up. Gooch the Great said, I'm just not feeling well. He went to the hospital. The doctor said, if you would have waited another day, you'd have been dead. Jesus. Yeah, and Pipey wouldn't go to the hospital, nigga, until hey, we got to go. <laughs> okay? Yeah, nigga. Fuck, fuck insurance. <laughs> You know what I mean, niggas is out here. This is what I don't understand. Niggas out here playing basketball and all that wild shit with no insurance. Fuck out of here, nigga. I don't play sports no more. So what's up with G Money Talk this week, man? Um, well, first of all, we got to shout out new patrons. We got three oh, new really? patrons. Really? Yeah. Got, wow, three. Y'all niggas is some real motherfucking bosses, nigga. Boss up, niggas. That's what y'all do, boss up. Spartans, man. Motherfucking Spartans. So shout out to uh, Andrew. Bomb alert. Bomb alert. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm bomber it's alert. A seg- you it. can't stop the segment once it's, right. once it's going. You can't stop it. <laughs> we got a uh, shout out to Sean Ugly, Andrew Carson, and Monique Wade. Three new patrons. Uh, shout out to them. Pa- mm. who, 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 who are these people? Uh, Sean Ugly, Andrew Sean Carson. Sean Ugly? Yes. All right, man. You're Sean Ugly. You're really beautiful for joining the motherfucking squad, baby. Welcome aboard. We appreciate you. Who's next? Uh, Andrew Carson. Mm. Like as in Carson Deli? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> One time, my, my Irish brother that taught me how to drink when I used to drink, um, Ronan, um, he was so drunk while he was bartending at his own bar. <laughs> 
and Carson Deli was there at the bag it in. <laughs> and Ronan <laughs> hit his head and bust the shit where he started bleeding. <laughs> and this nigga was bleeding inside Carson Deli's drink. <laughs> I was like, yo. But uh, Carson, thank you so much for joining the squad, man. And who else we got? Uh, Monique Wade. Oh. Falling in love again. <laughs> And we all appreciate you. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a big one right there. Monique Wade. Pain the Wade's way. I don't know how Jay-Z said that in that song, but you know, <laughs> I'm playing LeBron, I'm paying the Wade way, whatever. Hey, thank you so fucking much for being a, a rider. And now you're a motherfucking uh, uh, Spartan behind the fucking wall. Thank you. Yay, yay! Man, shout out to them, man. <laughs> and, uh, oh shit, I thought I had another shout out, but the, uh, the one thing I want to talk about, I can't stop seeing this on Instagram and shit, because every time I, every four pictures I go through, I see a fucking koala all burned up, but the fucking oh. wildfires in Australia. Yo. That shit's crazy, man. Yo, man. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm a fucking animal lover, man, and you know, you know, yeah, that shit with the koala bears, the the, the joeys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I sit back and I'm wondering, like, what the fuck is the world really doing? I heard they arrested the people, like, eight suspects that started that fucking fire. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, those little poor koala bears, those poor animals, dog. Oh, my God, dude. Like, did, did, is there, like, live footage? Uh, I, don't, I can pull some up. But what was you going to say about it? I was say, yeah, about the animals. Like, I saw there was uh, over a billion animals, like, dead from it. And I think, it was, like, 30 people. But. I know. I know one thing. I want to shout out, well, I got to shout out, nigga. I want to shout out all of our American brave men and women fighter fighters that went over there, our firefighters that went over there, and that's helping them fight their fire. Did you see those guys landing yeah, and did. everyone fucking clapping? They're like, yeah, yeah, fucking help is on the way. We're, 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 we're not... Help is on the way, man. Judge us by our hearts and our character on our solo motherfucking acts of fucking kindness and not by the politics that that r run this fucking horrible world, man. Judge us Americans on that, man. Straight up. What we got going... him Yeah, man. I'm just, I, I'm sorry, bro. I'm just sitting here, and I, I know you just caught me, like, just, like, I'm just sorry, man. Like, those, those innocent fucking animals, bro. Like, 
<sighs> that's just heavy, man. Like, not cool. Nah, man. You know, the world is really... That's why I'm telling motherfuckers, man. Like, yo, dog, like, y'all niggas don't know. Y'all niggas got to stop. 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 And, and just look around and see what the fuck is really up. Not the bullshit that motherfuckers is out here talking about. Acting like what's hip and what's not. Because it's not. Fuck out of here, dog. Like, we got to get our shit together. This has got to be the year of us coming together, bro. More forward thinking. What else you got for G-Money Talk, bro? Uh, That's all I had this week. Wow, that was so fucking gloomy. I know. Sorry. It's It's weird to go to another... Spot from there, but I guess we have to <laughs> halfway through the show. <laughs> oh my god, that was fucking dark. Okay. <laughs> I think you need to start searching for a little bit more pop culture saw, shit to I know, talk I don't about, know, man. I don't find anything. This I don't thing is, what the fuck was that? I thought you was gonna have something to soften up the blow afterwards. Nah, I <laughs> uh, no, he did not. Okay, okay. So my comedy escapades continue. Now, last Saturday, oh, my God. I can check off my bucket list of awesomeness. I got to perform on the same stage as his guest. Um... By his request from a comedy icon, a comedy legend, uh, Dave Chappelle's mentor, Tony fucking Woods. And boy, did he see me body. Did he see me body that motherfucker, bro. I'm going to say this. It meant everything for me. Performing with Tony Woods on his stage, that shit, I'm not going to hold you up. That shit's bigger than me doing the Michael Che weekend at Caroline's, me doing Heartbeat weekend. Like, Tony Woods is iconic. And to see him see me work, and to see the look in his eye of, like, respect. Not like I'm his little nephew nigga no more. Not like I'm just... I became his... I can't say peer, but I can definitely say I stepped into the arena in his eyes that night. And that shit felt super fucking awesome. And then my man DC Benny. Oh my God. Yo, DC Benny's just a fucking monster, my nigga. Real nigga shit. Um I I really just love him. I just love him to death. He's just so fucking funny, man. Um Well, DC Benny. <laughs> he makes me laugh like because he's like I, I, I'm like I study DC like he's a genius storytelling comic DC Benny right so when he's in all of me on stage that shit is just almost like come on dude what the fuck are you talking about you're DC Benny get out of here but um, <laughs> that shit felt awesome. That shit felt awesome. It, it, how he, how that made me feel was like tonight when we was down at the um, um, comedy, um, the Fat Black Pussy the underground. Um, mm-hmm. When we pulled up at the Grizzly Bear, 
that's where Kenny Warren and I went. We went around the corner, and um, I got to see Uncle Colin, uh, Uncle Colin Quinn, uh, and he was so excited and ecstatic to see me, and he's like, like, Jimmy, look at you. You fucking look off like things, but you look good. You know, Colin's one of those old, he's, he, I'm glad he didn't do no plastic surgery. Like, go out as an old <laughs> rock star nigga and he's got a good look about his old his old <laughs> manness you know what i mean like he could be one of those old action figures those niggas that used to kiss bitches in the 80s and, mo- <laughs> and those sitcoms like airwolf and shit like that if you google that you will hear that is the exact same music. How if you google that dude you will see that is the song what's the name the, name of the, the, the television show is called airwolf and yes colin looks like a hawk kind of guy that kissed bitches real passionately with his old man look now but um yeah he was just getting off stage from body and i was fucking awesome you know what i mean um but overall just overall dude it just what would what would be super awesome is if 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 Colin would have saw me on stage with Tony Woods that night that I just had to thank Colin though man like just for being awesome with me ever since I was a teenager and never giving up on me like when people was writing me off, telling them no, don't put him on, fucking tough crowd. Patrice O'Neill's like, fuck that, Jimmy's crazy. It's funny. I would love to do an episode with Jimmy. It, all Colin was like, we're doing it. You know, like he he always marched to the beat of his own drum, and I always loved that about him. You know, and it was, it was how Colin made me feel tonight is how DC Benny was making me feel with my set at Caroline's. Okay, so I stuck around because I had to see Tony Woods, all right? Um, And then there was this other funny dude that I met with him and his wife. Uh, I don't know. He said that he's um, like a a dude that uh, fucking um, owns a part owner of a, comedy club but i mean a lot of weirdos in this business so this thing could be saying <laughs> anything but I, I just felt bad if he felt like he had to say anything like that because i genuinely liked him on stage um he's uh he's he, he does obvious shit he talks about the obvious shit that people are uh, not really paying attention to what we're paying attention to and i thought he was clever smart and his wife was super dope their story was dope so you know it was just cool to just holler and fuck with that 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 part of the game, but nigga, nigga, I tell you this much. I'm sorry, y'all. Hold on. Mm-hmm. What I'm telling y'all is, I was having such a good time when I was at Caroline's, but I had another spot later on that night at Westside Comedy Club. Now. This is where the bullshit hit the fan, y'all. One thing I don't like is for people that's in position to flex nuts. G Money, no, he's not sleeping, y'all. He was actually working at that time. <laughs> he was actually doing something for the putting something up online. So if you guys are listening to this tomorrow, at this when it comes out. You guys can go to the fire in a hole and why on um, Instagram and you can see some um, shit, whatever he was doing. Uh, but nevertheless, fucking 
I don't like people that's in position that flex nuts. Is that is, is that pretty accurate that about is, me? That that's very accurate. Yes. Um. How how do I act in public when when people see what the wave is and they know what to do, and and I know what it is, but how do you see me behave with with people that that's just out here hustling and bustling, as what they would call them the they they would be considered normal in a weirdo's eyes, you know, because they really think they're a star, you know. Yeah. But me understanding the matrix and understanding that we just all people out here trying to figure it out figure it out um but how how do i interact with people your observation of me how i how i interact with the fan uh the family members after the show the 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 fake motherfuckers that you know just me in general how do i interact when people see that I'm a popular nigga and I'm 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 the wave or whatever the situation is. I, you just kind of let people like see what it is, basically. Like you don't really say much about it. You know, you I I wouldn't say you don't like you definitely embrace that when it comes to you, but not in like an arrogant, not you know what I mean. It's like yeah, man, whatever, you know. And then that's like when people try to, even when they talk to you about how good the show was, like with firing squad members, it's different because they kind of like. When you tell them, nah, man, it's family. They like they get that, you know what I mean. But then when you talk to people after a comedy show, that's not really what they're used to hearing. Mm-hmm. You know, they, even when they tell you, like, oh, thank you so much, man. Like here, like, like, oh, I'm gonna be here. I'm selling a t-shirt. You know, they kind they might hit you with that, but you're just like you bring them in for a hug and like, especially like they they weren't expecting that with you. You know what I mean? They just like are are probably just getting some like spiel afterwards. But like, but I think when people go up to you after a show, they're telling you that. Because they thought it was different, because you're different on stage too. Like it's the same. You're yourself on stage though. For people uh-huh, who haven't seen uh-huh, you, like you, uh huh, uh huh. So. Uh, yo, son, you know what would be funny? Like niggas really don't know, nigga. I'm 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 really magical on stage. Like these niggas just think that, you know, it's the Louis Gomez, it's the Big J Okersons, it's the uh, Dave Smiths, the Kurt Metzgers, the the Sherrod Smalls, the Kevin Brennans. Yeah, like. Niggas really don't know, homie. Like I'm just as nice as my brothers are. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm glad that you got to witness it though, because before you met me, I know you were like, yo, what kind of life is this nigga <laughs> living? <Yo? laughs> How can he be a comic? Is yeah. he serious? Or something? Like, people listening who know you from like Legion of Skanks and just that, and don't listen to us, like. They probably don't even. They might not even know you're a stand-up. They just think you're just the, some uh, character out here. You know what I some mean? Some street just, nigga. Exactly. You know. They probably just... think I'm the the legions of skank version of Smoothie. I'm <laughs> trying to get Smoothie up here this year, my niggas. <laughs> I'm trying to get Smoothie on the show this year, my niggas. Does he understand? Does he get? He really doesn't get it, right? How badly people want mm, like my nigga. I, I'm trying to tell this nigga, you baby famous nigga. <laughs> you are infant famous nigga. Do you understand that movie? Niggas is understanding your choice of life <laughs> by preying on shelter bitches, dog. Like at Skankfest, for every every three times someone called out your name i heard for one of those times i heard house movie at least you know one out of every three at least hey, yo uh, that's a fact he doesn't understand he doesn't get nigga, it. Like, <laughs> but you know right now smoothie real real low he real low because um you know the feds just raided the block nigga. oh yeah yeah, yeah i haven't really. been there i didn't even know the last time i was nah, there. Nigga, i haven't been over there either robin hit me up to come play motherfucking tunk uh, I was like, nigga, how about this? Take my PlayStation 4 ID, Jimmy's Conduct, J-I-M-M-Y-S-K-O-N-D-U-C-T, and get that 2K20 going, nigga. We'll have a Wi-Fi friendship from here <laughs> on, nigga. I am not coming around the block. When those Alphabet boys get involved, my nigga, trust me, nigga. I don't want no parts of it. Alphabets, they, I, nigga, I'm illiterate. I don't know nothing about words. I don't know nothing about letters. I'm, I, I am comfortably confused. Fuck that. 
my nigga. So Smoothie been real low right now. Niggas don't want to. Last thing, niggas, and 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 it's some niggas that they got caught up. Niggas was buying drugs, buying, using drugs to buy guns. And the nigga brought the Fed nigga into the circle. At first, the Fed nigga got money for the drugs, right? And then one day, the Fed nigga came over talking about, yo, I ain't got no money, but I got some guns. I got some guns. Can I get some? <laughs> and these niggas gave the nigga guns for krills. Like, like they gave the nigga krills, and he get and the and the Fed nigga gave them guns. So now the Fed nigga is like, oh, these niggas is not just selling drugs. These niggas is out. Here. They're terrorists. These niggas is taking guns and reselling them into the com- okay copy. Yo, they, I'm going to put this shit up on. I'm going to send you the link. Put that on the Patreon. So if niggas think I'm bullshitting about this motherfucking indictment. <laughs> and we know these niggas, yeah. G-Money. That's what's extra crazy. Vinny, Vinny gone, bro. They're offering Vinny 30 to life. Hey. The little niggas is all for 10 to life. They, everybody got the L at the end of their shit. But these are their offers. So if you blow, nigga, huh? And you already know what the feds, my nigga, like that, you don't go to the you don't go to trial. What is the percentage rate of niggas beating the feds? I'll tell you something about the feds, man. Those niggas, when they come to get you, that means they got you. Mm-hmm. You dig? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We gonna put that. I'm gonna send you that link, nigga. Put that shit up on the motherfucking uh, Patreon, nigga. Yeah, like oh, yeah. that shit is real. I let me tell you, nigga. I don't want nothing to do with child, man. Jail was crazy. I was, I met too many wild niggas in jail that just didn't have no fucking coof. They didn't have no coof. I told y'all niggas last week about my nigga Rome talking about the best head out here is for bitches that's dope, that's, that's feeds. This is what, these niggas is from Yonkers thinking about that, my nigga. Thinking like that. I was an alien in Valhalla, Motherfucking jail, nigga. I was an alien because I didn't smoke crack. Crack is a thing in that up there, man. Like, you don't smoke crack? Huh? <laughs> it, what the fuck do you mean? Do I not smoke crack? Why, you? Yeah. What do you mean? You put it in your blunts? No, nigga. I smoke crack. Regular looking niggas like us. <laughs> I was blown away. So to hear these things, they but to be exposed to that nigga rope talking about the crackheads sucking him off. This nigga like, yo, nigga, let me tell you something about motherfucking drugs. Drugs? Drugs, nigga? He said, I used to go out with a motherfucking pack. A 80 pack. I will put five pieces to the side. And that's just for the fiends I want to motherfucking dig out. Right. I was like, but you, you regular, you can get. And then he was like, what you think? You think fiends look like how they look on New Jack City, the movie, nigga? Do you know? And then it started to dawn on me. Yeah. Wait a moment. This nigga isn't that far off right here, <laughs> dog. I live a scumbag life. Yes, I, I know. Sc- I know. I know. I live a scumbag life. And let me tell you something about this scumbag life. What I learned is I used to know some bad bitches back in the day. 
And let me tell you something. Molly is the gateway drug to a bitch following the dirty brick road. There's a couple of bitches that used to be mean back in the day. That used to be mad disrespectful to me. And guess what? Thanks to the drugs, nigga. I took a couple of those bitches down. Yes. Yes. That's how that nigga Rome was talking to me, my nigga. That's how that nigga Rome was talking to me, my nigga. This nigga used to pull up. And that's how, that, that conversation I just gave y'all niggas, that's Rome, nigga. Nasty. Nasty wild niggas, son. I love that. <laughs> I love it. I love that he's a fucking scumbag. But, nigga, Jell, that shit just ain't it, man. And I'm a nigga that love to fuck. I love the fuck. I was on the phone with my nigga Charlie earlier today, man. My nigga Charlie was like, nigga, niggas is out here going to jail. Like, that's the place to be when there's no pussy out here, out there, up there. All the pussy out here. And I was like, you right about that. But let me tell you something, nigga. When I was locked up, I made the one to work until the weekend, until my visits came. Nigga, I, I, let me tell y'all how my setup was in jail, nigga. When I was locked up, nigga, and I went to get my freak on, my freak ons were Saturdays. Because on Saturday, that's when the, the jail is popping, nigga. The vintage done happen. So whatever drugs is in the motherfucking jail, there's no shit done floating around. <laughs> So, you know, niggas is hitting those sticks. You know, smoking they weed and shit like that. Nigga. <laughs> I'm a cold freak, nigga. I used to jerk off the Blacktail magazines from 1996, nigga. <laughs> Hustler magazines from 89. <laughs> all kind of fucking DNA all. <laughs> oh, my God. Pages stuck together. I, get, I used to jerk off the straight stunting magazines. <laughs> That's not even all nudity. It's just, <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah, let me tell you something, nigga. Fuck that. I would jerk off to a fucking Bloomingdale's catalog. <laughs> Of old bitches bras, if it if it fucking hit the light correctly, yes, yes, I would. But what I used to use to get my engine going, bro, I had the system, bro. I would go in the bathroom, lock the motherfucking store where the doors are, boom boom, motherfucking put my motherfucking five. Different bitches, different dimensions of different wild fat asses. I love a fat ass, nigga. Wild fat asses, different dimensions. Uh, <laughs> there was these butt man fucking magazines. <laughs> so I got mad different pages from the butt man. It's just, I got the motherfucking headphones with the cassette. Take what 40 minutes of sound of girls being fucked and bitches giving top. You hear a lot of You hear a lot of that shit, and I'm murking myself. I'm like, eyes closed, nigga. Can't have your eyes open listening to that shit. Yes, I'm putting myself in, in mortal danger by closing my eyes and really connecting with the moment, all right? 
But not only that, nigga, those sounds of top, of a bitch giving you sloppy top, <sighs> nigga. Yo, yo, what? <laughs> I had the Susie, nigga. The Susie that was up under the radiator, under the heater, nigga. That's just straight warm. You can't tell me I didn't have no pussy. <laughs> I was like, nigga. Because you got to improvise once you in jail. Because unless you willing to go to the dark side, and trust me, there was niggas going to the dark side, dog. <sighs> I seen a transsexual nigga roll up in the house. Broker than broke. He came from another jail with just all his state shit. State cop. State toothbrush. State soap. Mattress. All it. Not, nothing. Homie. That nigga went into that bathroom at night when this nigga, when they called Chow in the morning, bro, this nigga was a brand new nigga, homie. This nigga locker was stacked up. This nigga got mad Irish Springs. And I know I I knew the I knew a Muslim nigga that had Irish Spring that just had a mother load dropped off of Irish Spring. So I knew what that was. I was wondering why this big nigga coming out of the bathroom sweating and and, and hustling back and forth. I'm like, what the fuck going on? But you know, normally niggas be in there rolling dice. They make dice out of the soap and shit. Like, that's yo, man. Yo, I am just done. I just want to be great again. That's why I'm staying away from niggas that get me upset. If you know you get me upset, stay the fuck away from me. Stay the fuck away from me. I Well, I'm lying because I be doing shit like that to Kevin Brennan. I know he hates me, <laughs> but I still be forcing my love on him. So in honor of my, my co-host, Kevin Brennan, I want to just share with you guys what Kevin Brennan and I's relationship is like. Can you please put the dog at the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Brennan's the dog, and I'm the fucking cat. This is Kevin Brennan's and I's relationship. Hey yo, there's no sound. There's no sound, dude. Just play, play it. Yo, listen. I'm, I'm playing. I don't think there is sound. No, there isn't. There isn't. Oh. Look, 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 look. Press my hand. Uh. <laughs> He's angry at love. <laughs> look, look, the black cat. <laughs> look at his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from people that get you upset. Unless it's Kevin Brennan, <laughs> my fucking co host. Yo, man, I'm going to finish my story on the next episode about this shit with West Side Comedy Club. I right, because it's what happened that transpired after um my dope ass set with um legendary brother Tony Woods. Um hey guys, make sure y'all go check out the Darn- Darnell Rollins uh show, man. Uh, yeah, ep- episode seven, uh the man's episode is the episode you were on, but the show is fuck Darnell's fucking hysterical. So if you like our show, you'll definitely like his show. Go check him out and tell him that Fire in the Hole sent you, man. You know what I mean? Drop him a line. Drop him a line. Show support. 
Yo, man, this is the year of us coming together. This is the year of us supporting each other, man. I, I've been seeing a major shift in the support on the positive side, man. I just want to really, really just say thank you guys so much for everything that y'all doing and donating and sending that love over to the Patreon, believing in us. Um, There's so much shit that's coming that's going on that we're just not, we can't really, really talk about quite yet. But, it, oh, man. Thank you guys so fucking much. Um, oh, you want to play this? You want to play this? I was going to close out with it. Oh, my God. This is a great fucking joint to close out with, man. Hey, know this. If you choose to be boxed in, they're going to box you in. Stay light on your feet. See the play before it happened and make it happen. This is your 10 star general and your captain speaking, and we're signing off. Over and out.